the bad things are going down. The big, the big numbers, they're, the lines are going the right way, guy. I'm on a green screen, so the right way is confusing. Um, that, that, whatever, you get the idea. Anyway, <laughs> but what am I even looking at here? Okay, back up for a second. This is coming from 3dcenter.org, and they have a fantastic chart that is, uh, well, it speaks for itself. Let me Thanos snap myself out of the way. Okay, this is based on the, uh, oops, click again, ah, based on the average of the respective best prices at major German retailers set in relation to German MSRP. So 100% would be if the average best price was selling um, at German MSRP. So to be clear, if you're in America like me, this may or may not exactly line up to what we're seeing, but you know, hey, uh, this is a good data set, so let's take a look. Red line here is AMD, and those are the average best price. Again, not just average price, but average best price for all of their major 6000 series cards. And the green line here is the uh, GeForce 30 series average best price uh, for those cards. And you'll notice that we had an awful month in May. May was bad, and specifically for NVIDIA, which probably has to do with stocking up supply and switching um, production over into their light hash rate series of cards and their TI series of cards coming out. Uh, anyway, so we've seen that crash from being three times MSRP, and now we're back down to less than two times MSRP, and we're seeing that the AMD prices, while well, they're remaining roughly level here, they've come down since May, and we're actually seeing AMD and NVIDIA's price relative to their MSRP is the closest we've seen them since back in February. So that's pretty interesting. I think a part of that could be the uh, NVIDIA getting more supply out there, especially of the light hash rate um, non-mining uh, non things. Anyway, if you want to take a look at this, I've Googled, this is Google translated to English, but it's pretty readable. Uh, shows what retailers are looking at. They're also showing what kind of supply is available, and supply does seem to be getting better. Anyway, the link to this will be in the description of my video as my subscribers are used to. Snap myself back into existence to thank my subscribers. You are all beautiful people. Uh, anyway, uh, interested in what you guys think about all of this, but I've got some other interesting GPU related news, uh, mostly focusing around DLSS. First, uh, a quick update to um, actually, let, let's let's talk about this. So I my most recent video, I can maybe link it up here if I remember, is about updating manually to DLSS 2.2 in games that don't actually have that built in. Take a look at that video if you want, want the full process on how to do that. And some people were reporting various performance fixes. Now I've noticed um, at WCCF Tech, they have an article about DLSS today and there's an interesting sentence here where they say that, um, NVIDIA did not talk about DLSS 2.2, except to say that the company does, doesn't does advise doing the manual swap they detailed in a recent post. That's the same kind of swap I was talking about in my video, uh, as it's not guaranteed to work. Now, now here's what I'd say here. They're saying that they don't, they don't advise doing it because it's not guaranteed to work. They're not saying it doesn't work. They're saying it's not guaranteed to work. In other words, it hasn't been officially tested in games. And as we saw, both in what I said in my video, as well as if you jump into the comment section in that video, a lot of people were testing this out in various games. Uh, some people finding that it made some games worse and people finding that in some games it made it better. On average, it seemed like people were finding that Death Stranding and uh, Metro Exodus seemed to be the most positive feedback I was seeing in the comment sections while I was seeing uh, people saying that in other games like Control, it seemed to maybe make things worse and, and be kind of glitchy. So again, uh, this is kind of a use at your own risk kind of a thing, but it's an interesting thing to play around with. Now, thanks to my, um, my channel members, thank you, I got another one, Robert Nickel, awesome. Uh, I've actually decided to purchase Metro Exodus and uh, play around with that a bit myself. I might also get into Death Stranding. We'll see what I kind of have time for. But again, having a little extra support financially to buy games and test is fantastic uh, because some of my videos, you know, only make two or three dollars in ad revenue. So being able to buy some things is awesome. Anyway, more big DLSS news. Let's keep talking. 
So NVIDIA has a post saying, and by the way, if you're into Linux, there's, there's some big news here, uh, if you're into Linux gaming. But we've got DLSS coming to Rust, Doom Eternal, Lego Builder's Journey, and more this month. But in the details here, once again, Thanos myself out of existence. Um, so where's, where's, where's the big thing, the big thing here? So one of the biggest things is that Linux support is being added. So tomorrow, it says, with a Linux graphics driver update, we'll also be adding support for Vulkan API DLSS games on Proton. So if you're a Linux user uh, using Proton, it looks like you will get Vulkan DLSS API in your games. And I'm also hearing that they're working on the DirectX update as well, but that one's not coming quite as soon. Okay, what else is big news? Well, just in general, a lot more DLSS support. It's now available in Unreal Engine 5 and is coming to Unity 2021.2 very soon. So I think the Unity thing is a big deal because AMD's FSR was announced to have um, Unity support uh, coming. And the Unreal Engine 5 is a big deal just because, you know, lots of games are going to use Unreal Engine 5. And remember that in February, it got added to Unreal Engine 4. So DLSS, one of the biggest criticisms when it first came out was, first of all, the image quality sucked. That's mostly been remedied by DLSS 2.0. And then one of the other biggest concerns was game support. And that is growing rapidly now. It seems like I'm constantly finding more games uh, getting DLSS added. And um, I do plan on, like I said, purchasing those if I have the funds available and testing some of these out on uh, slower news days and all of that. So subscribe to the channel if you're interested in following that. What I'm really interested in is Red Dead Redemption 2 getting DLSS support, uh, but uh, we don't have an exact launch date other than coming soon for that one. Now in other, you know, GPU pricing related news. So remember the uh, 6900 XT liquid cooled version that's supposed to be only in system builders, <laughs> a system integrator stuff. Uh, and I, I did a video where I looked at main gear and like it was th plus $3,000 or something stupid like that to add it to your system. Well, hey, these aren't supposed to sell like separately from a system integrator, like you're supposed to buy it in a pre-built system. But in India, for only $3,007, you could buy one. And if you think that's a bad deal, wait till you look at Colorful announcing its flagship RTX 3090 for 5,000 US dollars. <laughs> Oh, when will it end? When will it end? Anyway, guys, um, if you think that's worth $5,000, hey, I mean, it's got like, it looks cool. <laughs> all right, you all have an excellent day. I'm done. Let me know in the comment section what you think about all of this. At least the GPU prices other than these top end my, things seem to be getting better, right? <laughs> have an excellent day.